Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home to a homestead. Today is day nine of Vlogmas. It's day 10 of Vlogmas. Upon consulting my phone, it's day 11 of Vlogmas. Yesterday, I did not get a chance to film or edit a vlog, so I was actually missing a day. It's definitely not to say that I wasn't filming. I was filming, I filmed all day. I was filming, prepping, shooting, all of the things for pretty much the entire day. I got really deep into it and I didn't wanna, I wanted to finish it. I didn't have time to edit, so sorry about that. Once I was finished with the project yesterday, I was pretty frustrated because I felt like it was something that I had been working on for so long and I was so invested in. And then once I, once I did it, I hated it. <sighs> like literally couldn't stand it. So, I should say the video might be good for one thing, but it's not good for what I want it to be. But I don't know yet. I still need to like get in, look at the footage, edit all those things. All that to say, I finished the day super frustrated and I wasn't sure what direction I was gonna go in. Now that I filmed something that I don't that I don't like, I kind of know how I want to fix it and how to better make it. Does that make sense? Like, I filmed what I thought would be wonderful. It sucked. So now it's time to refilm something. Learning the lessons that I've taken from it. And I hope I do. I really do. <laughs> Yesterday I did not get a single egg and I was wondering where they were. And then I found them tucked behind the nesting boxes. <laughs> they lit, all of them laid in a big nest back there. Ducks are so funny. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but basically I spent the whole day yesterday and I, f I was very frustrated that I felt like it was, uh, in, it was in waste, but it's just because it's not for the project that I filmed it for doesn't make it a wasteful thing. I hope that makes sense. I was just so excited about and spent so much time invested in this project and then to have it turn out so differently than I envisioned in my head, or at least my perception of it, was really frustrating for me. And it definitely made me take a step back and be like, frustrated. I was just really frustrated. It was, it was, I don't know. It was just, I had this thing built up in my head of what this was gonna be. And, and then I just, it wasn't so anyways recovery mode today and we're gonna do some ferments in the last video that you saw which I filmed two days ago we made some home harvested yogurt I guess maybe it might be technically clabber but it's yogurt so let's check on it it should be ready clabber it's not as thick as my friends was I feel like it maybe it needs maybe it needs a little bit more time or not a little bit more time, but she did hers in a half gallon. I thought I was supposed to do it in a whole gallon. So maybe that's a part of it. I don't know, but it looks like my regular raw milk yogurt. Pretty good stuff. It's really tangy. Hers wasn't tangy. The milk that I used for this yogurt was, it's like powerfully tangy not sour but it's just like it's sour the milk that I used was a week old maybe a week and a few days so maybe that had something to do with it because I tasted my friends last night and hers was was delightfully thick and it wasn't sour at all it's gloopy once you get past the top, it is gloopy. Maybe I will, maybe I will separate out the cream. See, because once you get further down, it's thick. It doesn't have like a hard set, like a heated yogurt would, but it definitely, it still has, it's still set. It is really tangy. I'm kind of disappointed because my friend's yogurt was so much better than mine. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and then it maybe in a few hours we'll come back and check on this together and maybe it will thicken up enough um, to not be frustrating. 
the last project for the day is one I'm very embarrassed by, but we're going to see if we can do it. Back in September, once once sourdough September was finished, I put my, I put one sourdough starter in the fridge. That was the one that was gifted to me that was like several hundred years old and I put it in there right before I went to Homesteaders of America at the beginning of October and I have not even looked at it since. I haven't been making sourdough creations because it kind of has been mess it was messing with my gut a little bit so I backed off. But anyways, let's see if we can save this. <laughs> so much huge on top. Look at this, it's like black liquid. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. I'm gonna go drain off, I'm gonna go drain off the hooch. There's like, it's almost like a black, it's just a really dark something in there. So let's drain that off. Well, not drain it off, I'm gonna scoop it off. I feel like that, that could be death and decay that we wanna get rid of. This came up in conversation in last night's Bible study, and I'm gonna save this and hopefully be able to give it to a couple of my friends. And then if I should fail <laughs> at this again, I can always ask them for um, for a little cut of their their starter. So let's do this. I'm thinking we're gonna do 150 grams. Hopefully that will be enough, and we hopefully that'll be enough, and we can capture whatever we need to capture. I'm gonna make sure to give this really good conditions. I'm gonna pop this in my dehydrator, which I just realized is filled with okra from about three months ago. It's life, you guys. I suck sometimes. If anything does happen with this today, defying all forms of logic, then I will show you, but most likely it's gonna take a few days to actually get this thing to start bubbling. And in the meantime, I will bring you back when the yogurt has refrigerated enough to be thick. I am incredibly surprised, but it actually worked, okay? I put this in the dehydrator after we made it together yesterday. Yes, that was yesterday, I'm sorry. <laughs> the first time that I checked on it, it was bubbling. So it was ready to get going. And I totally forgot that I had my other starter. This is my rye starter. It went nuts. Can you see the, it's it sunk back down, but it it made like a, a dome, <laughs> a foam dome here. See, it already, it like solidified the shape. So these things are active and ready to go. No worries about it. I haven't decided if I'm going to continue maintaining these in the fridge or if I'm going to dehydrate them. I need to do more research into how that would affect the long-term everything about this culture. So I'm, once I do that, I'll make my decision. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna feed this uh, probably one more time and then I'm gonna give uh, some of this off to my friend and then that's it. I don't plan on doing much of anything with it for the, for the time being. Let's see if this got any thicker overnight. Anytime you're dipping into a, a culture, you really wanna make sure that you're not contaminating it by double dipping. So we're just gonna get one scoop of this. I would say that's pretty thick. I don't know if it's any thicker than the yogurt I make, but it is insanely tangy. Why is mine so much tanger than hers was? I like tang though. I would say this is probably tangier than my kefir. But anyway, the video where I made this, somebody had made a suggestion of draining out some of the whey to get the thicker texture of yogurt. And that is great, I, I have done that. That's actually how I got this. This is key for cheese. It's kind of like cream cheese, but tangier. And that's a great thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Well, no, this is yogurt cheese, I'm sorry. This is from uh, yogurt, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyways, so, that's not necessarily why I'm making this. I'm making this for a different set of bacterial cultures. It has the highest concentration of bacteria and yeast of any fermented, naturally fermented food on earth. The kefir bacteria populates your gut, like it sticks around. And the yogurt is more of food for that bacteria and it's a transient bacteria that does different things. It has different profiles in there to do different things. And as somebody who is pursuing my gut health and healing through healing my gut, having a wide variety of 
bacteria, yeasts, acids, all sorts of different things is super important to me personally. So it's not about the texture. I don't particularly overly care about the texture. It'd be nice to have a nice thick yogurt, which I can totally strain this for a couple of minutes and it would probably get it to the texture that I like. Maybe I'll show you that. Are you guys interested in how I made uh, kefir, kefir cheese? I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow with you. Stay tuned tomorrow. We'll, like, we'll turn about half of this into uh, some thicker yogurt and maybe even do, so I'll show you how you can turn this into this. I was wondering what I was gonna do for tomorrow's video, so I'm glad that I came upon this because I think it's a great idea. I love straining this stuff out, making thicker stuff, making making uh, yo thicker like a Greek style yogurts or cream cheese, sour cream. There's all different kinds of things that you can do with it, but I'll show you the basic premise of how you can get achieve those different textures tomorrow. If you guys are enjoying Vlogmas, AKA Fermentmas, and you're enjoying following along with me as I am pursuing my gut health and all my homestead shenanigans, click this button right here. This is the subscribe button. This is what tells YouTube you wanna come back here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy. Down here is my last Vlogmas slash Fermentmas video. And then up here, I might even change the name of it to Fermentmas. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, playlist, check it out for all the awesomeness since the beginning of December. We'll see you next time. Peace out, sauerkraut. <laughs>